I 37M told my wife 36F that our roles are far from equal in our relationship and that I'm not missing seeing my brother so she can go on a two-week vacation with her friends. How do I get through to her? Been together for 17 years. Original post, June 14th, 2024. TLDR at bottom. Hi, I'll try to keep this short. Both in our 30s and have been together 17 years. I am male in my 30s and I am the sole provider for my family of six. Partner and four kids, two energetic dogs. I work five days a week and sometimes work on weekends if we need a little more money. My partner is a stay-at-home mom, Sam, and hasn't worked since our eldest was born. By her own choice. I wake up at 5 a.m. and take the dogs out, prepare kids' lunches slash snacks, ensure all school essentials such as bags are at the front door, and then head to work at a physically demanding job. Kids are picked up for daycare slash school at 7. Due to after-school activities and clubs, they're not home until 6. I come home at 7, make dinner most nights, help with homework, do bedtime for the little ones, do dishes, take dogs out for a longer walk again, and put the little ones to bed. If the house is a mess, I will, of course, clean it. I pay for everything, mortgage, bills, insurance, groceries, clothes, toys, technology, after-school activities, dates, and a person to deep clean the house once a month. My partner wants to go on a two-week-long vacation with her friends, which will overlap with the weekend away I had planned with my brother, who I rarely get to see as we live so far away. She wants me to cancel my trip because she's tired and needs a break. We got into an argument over it in which unpleasant things were said on both sides, but I am unwilling to budge on this. How do I get through to her that I need some rest? TLDR asterisk I pay for everything, do housework, and childcare while my wife is a psalm. She wants to go on a two-week-long vacation with her friends, which means I won't be able to go on a weekend trip with my brother, which was planned well in advance. We argued, and she told me I need to help out more, and I basically said what's in the title, how do I get through to her? Edit slash additional info asterisk. Hello all, sorry I haven't replied to many comments, but I have read most of them. I've seen a couple of questions I'd like to answer and figured that making a post would be better than replying to individual comments. My children are between 16 and 6. My wife doesn't take anyone to their clubs slash activities. Younger children's school finishes at 3 p.m. Their clubs are in the school. Older kids' school finishes at 3.30. They stay in a club until 4.30 and then go to a youth group with their cousins until they come home. My eldest makes their way to and from school on their own, while my youngest are picked up and dropped off. Kids are, of course, able to eat breakfast at home but often enjoy eating with their friends before school starts at 8. My wife doesn't walk the dogs because she doesn't like to, and frankly, they don't like her. I enjoy my time walking the dogs because it allows me some time to think. We have a large yard with dog houses, toys, and some agility equipment for them to use while I'm gone. They also get mental stimulation through Kongs and puzzle toys which have been prepared and stored in the freezer. What does my wife do all day? Honestly, she's not isolated. She often tells me of things she's done with her friends, sister, mother, etc. She goes to the gym and enjoys hobbies such as embroidery, knitting, and some jewelry design. She changes what she likes to do, says it keeps things fresh. Housework-wise, she does the laundry, I fold and distribute later, she will give dogs water and prepared meals slash enrichment. We have those robot vacuums and air purifiers to deal with the dog hair, but my wife will vacuum if needed. I wipe countertops and put dishes in the dishwasher after meals. Older kids take care of their own rooms slash bathrooms for an allowance. Have you ever not truly noticed something until it's right in front of your face? I was so upset because I wanted to go see my brother and she wanted to go on vacation with her friends, yes, she wants me to pay for it, and things have been like this for so long that I didn't see how unfair and imbalanced things were until I truly started to look at how our duties were distributed. You've all given me a lot to think about. I'll answer some comments later. Update, July 2nd, 2024. Backslash here is the update. It's not good, it's not totally bad either because apparently I've sprouted a backbone. A lot has happened, and I feel like my world is falling apart. This will be long. The following few paragraphs are some more background. The update will be marked with update dash asterisk asterisk. So you guys can find it faster. TLDR at bottom. Some of you have suggested that I enable her behavior, and I'd like to address it to explain how things got this way to begin with. My wife worked from age 16 to 20, but I'd often come home after work during the early stages of her pregnancy, and she would tell me how bad the morning sickness had been and how she was getting in trouble at work for being late or not turning up due to the issues she was having. One night, after a long discussion about things, she suggested that it would be easier and better for her and the baby if she stayed home during the pregnancy. 
I was reluctant at first because we weren't exactly swimming in cash, but ultimately, the health of my wife and child were more important than a few months of added stress. To save money, we moved in with my wife's older sister and her husband. We split rent and utilities but were still saving some money. The pregnancy wasn't easy on her. She was often cranky and uncomfortable and, as a result, could be quite mean and rude. So after further discussions with my wife and her sister, I took on more of the household duties, such as cooking, etc. When my eldest was born, my wife's sister helped with childcare while I was at work for the first year, but after she and my wife had a fight when he was about a year old, we moved into our own place. But my wife struggled during the day when I wasn't there to help, so we ultimately decided to put him in another daycare facility. I would drop him off on my way to work and would pick him up on my way back home when I finished. Once home, one of us would cook dinner while the other watched the baby. Back then, we had no pets, so household duties weren't too much and could be handled by a couple of hours of cleaning on Saturday or Sunday when we could split it between us both. When my son was three, my wife's sister offered to get her a job where she worked. My wife had to do an interview, but my SAL was confident she'd get the position. My wife was reluctant and nervous about returning to work, but attended the interview and was offered the job. I don't remember much of our celebrations that night, but it ended in the conception of our second child. My wife told me when she'd been at her new job for just over a month. She stuck it out for a couple more weeks, but was fired due to not turning up for shifts. I asked one of her doctors about the issues she was having so early in the pregnancy, back pain, leg pain, nausea, etc. But my wife cut me off before I could finish and asked me to leave the room. When we got home, she berated me for speaking to her doctor like she was a child and told me that if she wanted something brought up to her doctor regarding her pregnancy, she'd do it herself. I had embarrassed her because she knew her body and knew what was normal and what wasn't. I still thought the issues had to be addressed with her doctor, but whenever I brought it up, her mood swings would get worse. My MIL came to live with us when my second was born for a short, while when I returned to work after my paternity leave. When my daughter was about four months old, my wife expressed she was having difficulty looking after her by herself during the day, but my MIL, who had her own life and responsibilities, couldn't come back and stay indefinitely. We had a two-bedroom apartment then, and having her sleep on the couch didn't seem fair to me. So we enrolled my daughter in daycare while my son was at nursery. My son went to daycare after nursery as well, so I'd pick them both up around 6 p.m. and head home. My wife promised she would speak to her doctor about the possibility of depression, etc., and her mood did improve with the additional help with the children. My wife took on cooking and cleaning duties then but struggled as well. I would often come home to burnt slash ruined food and would need to make something else anyway. So I ended up cooking dinner most nights so we wouldn't be wasting food. During a weekend away for a friend's wedding, when my daughter was five, I suggested that my wife go back to work. Both kids were in school now, and I thought we could improve our lifestyle with two incomes. We had recently bought a house because the apartment was too small for us and the children needed their own rooms. She seemed hesitant, which I understood after being out of work for so long, but she agreed. She applied for several positions but had no luck with interviews or callbacks. We found out she was pregnant with our third not long after that, and returning to work was put on hold again. The pregnancy was difficult as expected, but again my MIL came to stay when I had to return to work. She stayed for a while, but had to return to her own home eventually. Before she left, my wife told me that she feared she would struggle with our second daughter just as she had the first two. I tried to reassure her, but she seemed to become very upset the second her mother left. I would return home with the eight and five-year-old to a crying baby and nothing done around the house. Her mood and actions affected the entire house, so reluctantly, I put our second daughter in daycare as well, but I told my wife she had to talk to her doctor and that we'd no longer be having any more children. She was upset, and we had a huge fight about it, but I got a vasectomy, and she accepted it. We've always used protection. My wife is on birth control, and I always use condoms, but given that it had already failed twice for us, when my first was conceived after my 21st birthday, I was so intoxicated I don't think I wore one, our second after celebrating her new job, and our third at our friend's wedding, I didn't want it to happen again. But obviously, the universe had other plans for us, and our third daughter was born two years after our second when we were celebrating a promotion I'd gotten at work. Obviously, this is a brief summary of events, and there have been several other moments through the years when I've suggested she go back to work, but I thought I'd try to provide further background for those who are curious about how we got to where we are. Someone asked if my wife has had a break recently. She has never taken two weeks away before, but she goes away a couple of times every year for weekend trips with family and friends. The longest she has been gone is a week. In regards to the dogs and why they don't like her, she doesn't like them. She thinks the mental stimulation I provide through Kong toys, games, puzzles, 
etc., is unnecessary but gets upset if their energy levels are too high. One is a German Shepherd which I was gifted for my birthday, and the other is a German Shepherd Malinois mix my wife brought home because she thought our GSD needed a friend. Yes, they have been to training and were originally in doggy daycare for the first couple of years. On to the update, I suppose. Update. So, as one of you suggested, I took a day off work. I genuinely wasn't feeling too good either, but I intended to speak to my wife about the situation while the children were at school. Kids all left for school by 7-ish. My wife came downstairs at 11.45 and seemed very shocked to see me. She asked what I was doing at home, and I explained I took a sick day as I wasn't feeling well. The first words out of her mouth were, but we need the money, you don't look that bad. I made a face, and she quickly asked what was wrong and asked if she could get me anything. I asked for water, and we sat on the couch, but soon her phone rang, and she went off into the kitchen to talk. She came back a while later and asked if I wanted to get something to eat, and I said we could make something from the kitchen. She said she wanted to go out, and I said we could order takeout, but I wasn't in the mood to go out. The dogs had been sitting by the chest freezer, waiting for their lunchtime enrichment for 10 minutes now, and I asked if she was going to feed them. She flopped onto the couch and asked me to get it. I said no, she asked again, and I said no, again. She glared at me but eventually got up and gave it to them. She asked me to take her out again several times, and I kept saying no. I was starting to get a migraine, which I told her, but she kept asking, suggesting we could go shopping, she could get her nails done, and we could enjoy the day together. I refused, said we had something to talk about and she said we would, then went upstairs. She came back down 40 minutes later dressed up and said if I wasn't going to take her out, she'd go herself. I tried to get her to sit down so we could talk, but she blew me a kiss at the door and rushed outside without even locking it. While she was out, I took some of your advice and cancelled the cleaning lady we have. I apologized to her, as I really did like her, but she was very understanding, and I think we parted on good terms. She returned home at 8pm and immediately asked where dinner was. I told her the kids and I had already eaten. She asked where her dinner was, and I told her she'd have to make something for herself. She said she'd just order something, and I told her no. This gave her pause, and she looked at me like I just told her she had to starve. She said she couldn't cook, and I told her I know she's perfectly capable of making something. We have plenty of food. It's not like she has to be a gourmet chef to stick a tin of soup or something on the stove. She left again and returned 30 minutes later with takeout for herself, which set the younger kids off. Yes, they'd already eaten, but she walked in the door finishing her food and drink with an empty bag and dessert tub. Our youngest asked why she didn't bring her any dessert, and my wife said, Daddy said I wasn't allowed to. I did not say this, and I swear it took more strength than I'd like to admit not to yell at her in front of our daughter. When the kids were in bed, I asked her to sit and talk about the situation regarding our trips. She asked if I'd rescheduled with my brother, and I firmly told her no and that I wouldn't be. I tried to have a conversation. I explained I felt our duties were incredibly uneven and that I'd like for her to take on more responsibilities with the children and the house. She argued that she does enough, and I asked her to make a list. She put laundry down, feeding the dogs, making doctor's appointments, and grocery shopping. I brought out my own list with everything I've told you guys so far and added that I created the dog's meals, she simply has to give it to them, I fold and distribute laundry, take kids to doctor's appointments, and that the groceries are ordered through an app on her phone, delivered to the house. And I put them away. She got up then. I asked what she was doing, and she said she was going upstairs. I didn't argue, I didn't want it to result in an argument and wake the kids up. She was visibly shaking with anger. A while later, I went upstairs as well. She was on the phone with someone, and when I entered the room, she demanded I leave and go sleep on the couch. I refused and climbed into bed. She hung up the phone and demanded again that I sleep on the couch, and again, I refused. She grabbed me and physically tried to drag me out. That resulted in a fight, and I ended up sleeping on the couch because she was going to wake the kids up again. The following days were much of the same. I have stopped folding and putting away her laundry. I do it for myself and the younger kids, and my two oldest take their piles and put them away themselves. I still cook for the kids, but have told my wife that she has to make her own meals. Petty, I know. I think my eldest heard us arguing because he asked if he could take the dogs out for a couple of walks with his friend during the week. He has, and he says he's enjoying it, but I think he and my wife had an argument the other day because he's been very distant with her, and things just feel off. He's asked me about three times if I love him. Of course, I've told him there is nothing he could ever do to make me not. Yes, I've tried to talk to him about it, but he doesn't want to talk yet, and I need to respect that. I think pushing him could be a mistake. Thursday night, 
My wife asked if we could have a drink as I had to leave on Friday to see my brother. I had one, but honestly, it went right to my head, and I honestly just wanted to sleep. She kept trying to initiate intimacy, but I wasn't in the mood. I woke up Friday morning, and my wife was gone, so was her suitcase. I've texted and called, but there's been no answer other than a text telling me we talk about it when she's back. She ignored me and went on her trip regardless, and I am furious. I have left her some cash in the bank account she has the card for, but have removed everything else into another account. I had to call my brother to explain why I wouldn't be coming to see him, and he arrived here on Saturday with my nephew and two nieces. The house is very full, but honestly, it feels more open than it has in a long time. The kids seem relaxed, and so do the dogs. I don't know what will happen with my wife, but I am done. I can't afford a lawyer right now, and unfortunately, I don't know any who could give me a deal or do me a favor, but this marriage is over. It should have been a long time ago. TLDR asterisk wife and I talked, had an argument, she went on a trip regardless, and my brother is here with his family. This sub only allows one update, so if I post anything further, it will be on my own profile. Relevant comments. OOP on if his wife might have undiagnosed health problems, including PPD asterisk. OOP. I spoke to her doctor about the issues she was having because she would not. He asked her what was happening, how she was, and she would say the pregnancy was fine, she was having no issues. Yet at home, all I got was how hard things were, how ill she felt, how sore she was. Screaming, yelling at me. I went into the bedroom because I am 6 feet 5 inches and work a physically and mentally demanding job. It is not good for my body to sleep on a two-seater couch. I wanted to sleep as I had work in the morning. She escalated and got physical, not me. She made the argument worse, not me. Undiagnosed PPD? She has been to her doctor who diagnosed her with nothing, she told me so herself. And as for me knocking her up? It takes two people to create a child. We do not live in America, and my wife is pro-choice. If she wanted to terminate, she has the ability to do so. I told her after our second was born that I didn't think having more kids was a good idea, and she insisted. I said the same thing after our third and after my vasectomy, and she lost her mind. Let her go on vacation and feel like herself for the first time in forever. Did she not feel like herself when she went on multiple weekends away last year with her friends? Does she not feel like herself when she's hanging with the girls for lunch dates through the month? Do you know the last time I saw my brother in person? Before the pandemic. He is here to support me. If you want my wife to go on vacation so I can't, then it's perfectly reasonable that my brother can come to the home I pay for when I need him. Are you my wife? Update number 2, in comments July 2, 2024, same day, 6 hours later. Slight. Update, I'm not going to add this to the post as it's already long enough. Please excuse any spelling mistakes as I'm so tired. Thank you all, but I'm not in America. I know a lot of you have suggested I message her telling her I'm going to divorce her, etc. But I think I'm going to play it cool, act like I've accepted her decision, so she's not on guard. I know she said something to my son, but he won't tell me what it is, and I feel like if I push him to, he might not ever, but my nephew and he are hanging out a lot. They're close despite not seeing each other much, so I'm hoping he might confide in him and maybe open up. I'm not just letting this go, we will talk, but I don't want to push him too much. I am not a lightweight. I can drink, but I have been exhausted, and I mean very exhausted for some time now, and I think that maybe that's why I passed out after having one drink. But I would be lying to myself and to you if I said I wasn't suspicious. I am suspicious of a lot now. I swear, I'm not an idiot, but I really feel like one now. Some of you have suggested that I get the kid's DNA tested, especially my youngest. And while I know that this is likely something I'll have to do, it breaks my heart to think that they're not mine. My girls all look the same, just older versions of each other, so if I have to DNA test the youngest, I have to do them all. I never wanted kids. This is why I've always used protection. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but I love my own. I love these kids. Regardless of the DNA test, they are mine, but I fear if it comes back that they're not, it could damage our relationship. My brother has read my posts and spent the last days telling me everything he dislikes about my wife, obviously not in front of the kids. He's pretty funny, and I feel like I haven't been able to laugh like this in a long time. He says he's going to make a Reddit account. Lord knows what he'll say. Writing this update has opened my eyes further. I see how the timing of wanting her to go back to work lines up with each pregnancy, but when these things are years apart, and you're concentrating on supporting the family and work, your brain sometimes pushes these thoughts away until something triggers them again, and boom, you're slapped in the face with the realization that your entire relationship is potentially built on a mountain of lies. She has her phone and iPad with her, so I can't check any of that, but I'm going to be going through her stuff. Is it an invasion of privacy? Likely. Do I care right now? 
No, I feel like I've wasted the majority of my life, the good years, and that feels horrible to say when I have four kids. I promise I don't mean that they're a waste. As I said in the post, this marriage is over. I am done. My kids deserve better, but I won't be alone when I confront her. As I said, she can get physical, and no, I have never retaliated, and I don't want to be put into a position where I need to. I thank you all for your comments, your insight, your kindness. I know I haven't replied to many comments at all, but don't really have time to do so when there are so many, but I am trying to respond, etc., DMs, as that seems like the easier thing to do. I want to ask my SAL what actually happened with my wife and that job, but I don't want her to know I'm suspicious. My SAL is a kind woman, but she is my wife's sister, so her loyalties lie with her, I suppose, and I don't want to alert my soon-to-be ex. Does anyone have any ideas on how I can do this? Seems odd to bring up a job my wife had for a very brief time years ago. I wish you all the best. Relevant comments. OOP on the accusations for not respecting his wife's needs and wants asterisk. OOP, how do I not respect her needs slash wants? I pay for everything and do the majority of the child slash pet care and housework. I have not gone on vacation in years because I was providing for my family. I have given her everything she's wanted for the past 17 years, and she couldn't give me a weekend with my brother. Why couldn't we both go on vacation? Because I don't randomly have the money to fund two weeks away for her. I can't just up and leave my 16-year-old to look after three younger kids and two energetic dogs. I couldn't take them with me because that would mean multiple plane tickets and accommodations, food, etc., for them, as well as dog sitting slash boarding for the dogs.